All right, so for problem 4.5-4, um, is uh, this question over here. Uh, usually when we are asked to do these, um, I always just try to set as, as many equilibrium positions as possible. Um, either that's force or moment or, or stress or sh uh, strain. So in this case, this is moment, and I draw this moment diagram over here. Right, so it's going the counterclockwise direction, so it's as positive. Um, we just treat that as positive because the angle, right, this way, where the angle always count from x from here, and this is counterclockwise. Okay, so we say that's positive, um, and uh, and we get to here, which this is clockwise. This is going down, so this is we go down by by uh, by by eight, right? So this. This corresponds to f neg negative five kN times right, and this is three positive kilonewtons times meter. Okay, and then it's going to go all the way there. So uh, theoretically, there is a reaction force or a reaction moment going up here, which is five kilonewtons times m. But that's not important right now. Um, what's important is that we're trying to figure this out. Uh, what's going on? So. Uh, yeah, it's not being asked, um, but just a little side note. Uh, so yeah, so now we know. Uh, so basically, this is this is t, right? This is basically t. So we now we know t one is is three, and then t two is is five. T two is five. A negative five, right? So now we have T1, T2. We can so determine the maximum shear stress in the shaft and identify its location. Okay, so. The maximum is equals to P or T times R over J, right? That's a, a equation that you just sort of have to know, one of the most important equations. Uh, since there are two sections, we can just do them separately. So we have T, uh, uh, T2 max, right? Which is this one over here. Right, T2 mask, uh, max equals T1, so I mean T2, so it's negative 5 kN uh, times R. What is R? R is uh, 50, so 0 0.05 meter over by J. What is J? J is, okay, so there's two, 0. Point, well, sorry, I had to divide by 2 because that's the diameter. So divided by uh, pi times over 32 times uh, d, what is this, d o2 uh, to the power of 4 minus uh, d uh, i2 to the power of 4 over. Okay, so, well, we have all these information, right? This is, you know, 0 0.05 meter, and this is uh, 0 0.02 meters. And, you know, we plug everything into a calculator. Um, this should give you somewhere around, um, f uh, sorry, it's going to give you somewhere around negative uh, 200, I mean, 203.7 megapascal. Right, but this is share. So what my professor taught me, like right now in the beginning, it doesn't really matter. It's just absolute value uh, because shear stress. Um, so it's it, it, positive and negative doesn't matter that much yet, right? And then you treat tau one is uh, so this will come becomes important when we deal with more circle more circles so tau one max this is you know a little easier so this is three positive kilonewton times a meter forgot a meter over here uh times what is this zero point still zero point zero five meter divided by two uh over you know pi over 32 squared times 0 0.05 to the power of 4, right? Uh, pl hit all this into your calculator, you are going to get um, 50 point... Okay, I'm so sorry. I think I, I wrote the other way around. So this is 203.7 megapascal, right? And this is negative um, 50.2 megapascal, 
right? Determine the microstructure in the shaft and identify the location. So it's pretty easy, right? We can, because see, that's another thing, maximum shear stress, right? It doesn't matter which one is bigger or, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative because it's a matter of, you know, direction, right? It's just this is, you know, smaller than this. So we say T2 is smaller than T1, right? Therefore, the maximum shear stress is so I mean if you want to write it max mathematically it can be max t1 dot t2 or uh, I'm sorry shear shear 1 and shear 2 and that equals shear 2 a uh, shear 1 so it's this so if you want to write them write it mathematically I'm pretty uh, you can say max shear 1 shear 2 shear 1 is the big one and and then it occurs it occurs at or on the on on segment one right segment one which is uh, ba okay perfect now let's move on to the so we're done with a and then now let's do b right so it, this is b is the angle of rotation um so we can say well there's a um uh, equation for this right so it's uh, g2 so we can do the 2 1 first so it's um, oh my bad let's let's do 1 because 2 will depend on 1 so let's do let's do 2 uh, let's do let's do 1 first right so it's t1 l1 over g1 and uh, j1 okay so we have t we know what t1 is we know what l1 is which is you know literally this and remember to convert it into meter which is 0.8 meters j we already figured out what that is g is already given 26 gigapascal uh that is going to give you in the end about 0 0.2 the five point excuse me radian and um and uh our radii right yeah excuse me and uh and then now there's this so you can figure out the rotation at at this point well sorry it just if we just look at this right so this equation is just just figuring out with this force single-handedly how much does it turns it to um, so this is positive and uh, t1 sorry t2 uh is uh is uh zero point zero seven two ready i okay and uh t2 is negative right so t1 0 0.251 radii a uh, radian ra radii yeah minus 0 0.0772 um Right, yeah. So in the so this is C. Well, this is well. You shouldn't say this. Um, we know that this is the angle change at B, right? And this is just the angle change. But the angle change at C equals this plus radius at B, right? It's kind of like strain, right? The angle turn is shear strain sort of in a way you can understand it like that so you have to add everything up well you kind of have to add everything up when you deal with anything right when it's in a in your rod and and um, it connects so yeah don't forget um you know when you do the outsider ones and don't forget to add the inner changes um so you add these together uh, which is we wrote down over here uh, in the end it's going to give you a 0 0.174 radii and that is the change of angle at uh, C right which is this one so perfect I think yeah we solved uh, yeah angle C and B so yeah well this is uh, what you need to know for this uh, for this one um, I hopefully hopefully you guys still remember this right it's actually pretty really easy I mean very visual to draw a, a moment diagram or shear moment diagram or whatnot so yeah you start at three and then you 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 know you go with positive right and then you hit 
So this is C, you hit B, right? Guess what? There's another one pulling you down. And then you go keep going straight because there's no interference. And eventually you reach the wall. Well, the wall doesn't change. You can't rotate the wall, right? So the wall is is giving you amount of, you know, a, a reaction, right? Because you, you're twisting it this way because 8 minus 3 it's it's you twisting it this way so the wall has you gives you a counteracting force in the opposite direction you know due to Newton's third law so we say oh the reaction at a is you know it's uh, negative 5 right I mean sorry positive 5 yeah to go back to 0 right because this whole thing is not rotating it's a stationary it's 0 okay uh, hopefully this was helpful good luck on your studies and I'll see you in my future videos bye